It was the best I could do. It wasn't as good as I'd wanted, but at least I meant every word of it. I had no hidden agenda. I didn't secretly hope for anything out of it. Not a diary, not Veronica's good opinion, not even an acceptance of my apology. I can't say whether I felt better or worse after sending it. I felt not very much, exhausted, emptied out. I had no desire to tell Margaret about what had happened. I thought more often of Susie, and of the luck any parent has when a child is born with four limbs, a normal brain, and the emotional makeup that allows the child, the girl, the woman, to lead any sort of life. May you be ordinary, as the poet once wished the newborn baby. My life continued. I recommended books to the sick, the recovering, the dying. I read a book or two myself. I put out my recycling. I wrote to Mr. Gunnell and asked him not to pursue the matter of the diary. One late afternoon on a whim, I drove round the North Circular, did some shopping and had supper at the William IV. I was asked if I'd been away on holiday. In the shop I said yes. In the pub I said no. The answers hardly seemed of consequence. Not much did. I thought of the things that had happened to me over the years, and of how little I had made happen. At first I assumed it was an old email, mistakenly resent, but my heading had been left there. Apology. Below my message was undeleted. Her reply went, You still don't get it. You never did. And you never will, so stop even trying. I left the exchange in my inbox and occasionally reread it. If I hadn't decided on cremation and a scattering, I could have used the phrase as an epitaph on a chunk of stone or marble. Tony Webster, he never got it. But that would be too melodramatic, even self-pitying. How about, he's on his own now? That would be better, truer. Or maybe I'll stick with, every day is Sunday. Occasionally I would drive over to the shop and the pub again. They were places where I always felt a sense of calm, odd as that may sound. Also a sense of purpose, perhaps the last proper purpose of my life. As before, I never thought I was wasting my time. This was what my time might as well be for. And both were friendly places, at least friendlier than their equivalents where I lived. I had no plan, so what else is new? I hadn't had a plan for years. And my revival of feeling, if that's what it had been, towards Veronica, could scarcely be counted as a plan. More of a brief, morbid impulse, an appendix to a short history of humiliation. One day I said to the barman, do you think you could do me thin chips for a change? How do you mean? You know, like in France, the thin ones. No, we don't do them. But it says on the menu your chips are hand cut. Yes? Well, can't you cut them thinner? The barman's normal affableness took a pause. He looked at me as if he wasn't sure whether I was a pedant or an idiot, or quite possibly both. Hand-cut chips means fat chips. But if you hand-cut chips, couldn't you cut them thinner? We don't cut them. That's how they arrive. You don't cut them on the premises. That's what I said. So what you call hand-cut chips are actually cut elsewhere and quite probably by a machine. Are you from the council or something? Not in the least. I'm just puzzled. I never realised that... Hand cut meant fat rather than necessarily cut by hand. Well, you do now. I'm sorry, I just didn't get it. I retired to my table and waited for my supper. And then, just like that, the five of them came in, accompanied by the young minder I'd seen from Veronica's car. The badge man stopped as he passed my table and gave me his bow from the neck. A couple of the badges on his deerstalker chinked quietly together. The others followed. When Adrian's son saw me, he turned his shoulder as if to keep me and bad luck away. 
The five of them crossed to the far wall but didn't sit down. The care worker went to the bar and ordered drinks. My hake and hand-cut chips arrived, the latter served in a metal pot lined with newspaper. Perhaps I had been smiling to myself when the young man arrived at my table. Do you mind if I have a word? Not at all. I gestured to the chair opposite. As he sat down, I noticed over his shoulder the five of them looking across at me, holding on to their glasses, not drinking. I'm Terry. Tony. We shook hands in that awkward, elbow-high way that being seated imposes. He was silent at first. Chip, I suggested. No, thanks. Did you know that when they put hand-cut chips on a menu, it just means fat? It doesn't mean they're actually cut by hand? He looked at me rather as the barman had. It's about Adrian. Adrian, I repeated. Why had I never wondered about his name? And what else could he have possibly been called? Your presence upsets him. I'm sorry, I replied. The last thing I want to do is upset him. I don't want to upset anyone any more, ever. He looked at me as if he suspected irony. It's all right. He won't see me again. I'll finish my food and be off, and none of you will ever see me again. He nodded. Do you mind me asking who you are? Who I am? Of course not. My name's Tony Webster. Many years ago I was a friend of Adrian's father. I was at school with him. I used to know Adrian's mother, Veronica, too, quite well. Then we lost touch. But we've seen quite a bit of one another over the last weeks. No, months, I should say. Weeks and months? Yes, I said. Though I shan't be seeing Veronica again either. She doesn't want to know me any more. I tried to make it sound factual rather than pathetic. He looked at me. You understand that we can't discuss our clients' histories. It's a matter of confidentiality. Of course. But what you've just said doesn't make any sense. I thought about this. Oh, Veronica, yes, I'm sorry. I remember he, Adrian, called her Mary. I suppose that's what she calls herself with him. It's her second name, but I knew her, know her, as Veronica. Over his shoulder I could see the five of them standing anxiously, still not drinking, watching us. I felt ashamed that my presence bothered them. If you were a friend of his father's, and his mother's, then I think you don't understand. At least he put it differently from others. I don't. Mary isn't his mother. Mary's his sister. Adrian's mother died about six months ago. He took it very badly. That's why he's been having problems lately. Automatically, I ate a chip then another. There wasn't enough salt on them. That's the disadvantage of fat chips. They have too much potato -y inside. With thin chips, not only is the more crispy outside, but the salt is better distributed too. All I could do was offer Terry my hand and a repeat of my promise. And I hope he'll be all right. I'm sure you look after him very well. They all seem to get on, the five of them. He stood up. Well, we do our best, but we get hit by budget cuts almost every year. Good luck to you all, I said. Thanks. When I paid, I left twice the normal tip. At least that was one way of 